Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about anti-aliasing in further detail. Recently, I had posted a short explaining what anti-aliasing is and what are the different types of anti-aliasing. We saw different types of anti-aliasing. So in this particular video, we're going to talk about each of these in further detail. So let me start off by giving you a quick introduction to what is anti-aliasing exactly. So basically anti-aliasing is a technique that is used in computer graphics to blur out uh, rough edges on surfaces. So this basically helps you enhance the entire overall visual quality of objects. Um, this kind of blurs out uh, the rough edges essentially. That's what it is basically. All right. Now there are different types of anti-aliasing techniques, obviously, because, you know, uh, we've played games. You might have observed that all of these games in their settings have an option uh, wherein they explicitly ask you which anti-aliasing technique you want to use for running your game. Definitely, you know, you might have never thought of this from this perspective. You might have just tweaked these options here and there. Definitely something that I did in my childhood days when I used to play games. Uh, I had no idea what anti-aliasing means. And, you know, as a game developer, I'm exposed to these terms. So I just thought it will be cool to share it with you guys. This is super important because choosing the right anti-aliasing technique also means that it adapts to your hardware properly and each hardware is capable of you know adapting to different different types of anti-aliasing techniques so in this video we are going to deep dive into all of these different types of anti-aliasing i've made a list of all of these for you guys and uh, all the resources are in the description you can check out all the links uh, we are going to talk about nvidia we are going to talk about all these different types of anti-aliasing techniques so let's get started all right so the very first uh, uh, anti-aliasing technique that i want to talk about is fxaa which is fast approximate anti-aliasing how it works is that it applies a post-processing blur to smooth out edges by detecting contrast. Uh, the pros of this are that it is very fast and it takes minimal performance hit. The cons are that it can sometimes blur out some, some uh, you know, deeper details and textures. And the best use case for this is it's good for performance on low-end hardware. So if you're running a hardware that is uh, low-end, you can use FXAA for a better performance. The next anti-aliasing technique I want to talk about is SMAA, which stands for Subpixel Morphological Anti-Aliasing. This works in a way such that it uses edge detection and pattern recognition to reduce aliasing, which means you know to uh, kind of add blur. Whenever I'm talking, uh, talking about these anti-aliasing techniques, somewhere or the other, it's all about blurring out the rough edges. All right. The pros of SMAA is that it is sharper than FXAA and it is better at preserving details whereas the cons are that it is slightly heavier in performance than uh, fxaa but it is still much more efficient and the use case for this is to use a balanced option for modern 3d games the next um, anti-aliasing technique i want to talk about is mlaa which is morphological anti-aliasing it works basically by using a post-processing method using shape analysis of edges um, it is definitely better than FXAA in some cases and the cons are that it is rarely used now and it is completely replaced by SMAA. Uh, now let's talk about temporal anti-aliasing uh, techniques for now. All right. Uh, so temporal anti-aliasing st uh, technique stands for TAA uh, and basically the way it works is that uh, it combines data from previous frames to smooth all the edges. Uh, it is very effective at removing flickering and shimmering in motion and the cons of this is that it can introduce ghosting or blur and artifacts. Uh, the use case is that it's widely used in modern AAA games. Example, it is basically Unreal Engine's default. The next uh, anti-aliasing technique I want to talk about is multi-sample anti-aliasing which stands for MSAA. Uh, the way that this works is at, that it samples multiple points uh, per pixel at geometry edges and the pros are that it has sharper uh, image quality and it is it definitely gives a better edge quality as well. Cons are that it is limited to geometric edges and it doesn't affect the shader or textures which means that it comes at a higher GPU cost. In essence it's actually working on the geometric shape. right? And uh, the use case for this is it's ideal for real-time 3D games where image quality actually matters. The next type of anti-aliasing technique is super sample anti-aliasing, which also stands for SSAA. Now, super uh, sample anti-aliasing techniques works uh, in a way such that it renders the image at higher resolution and then it further down samples it. It provides the best visual quality, which is one of its pros. And the cons is that it is extremely demanding on the GPU. 
uh, it is actually mostly used in high end systems for for high end uh, resolution uh, screenshots the next type of anti aliasing technique is dlaa or dlss uh, this is actually an ai based anti aliasing technique from nvidia this basically works on nvidia's ai models and it is based on the deep learning models that they are introducing recently and uh, the pros are definitely that this is extremely high quality without the blur of daa and uh, the cons are that it requires an extremely efficient hardware so you will be able to typically run this on your rtx systems um, and the use cases for this are definitely high end uh, pc games or the games that have rtx enabled in them right so dlss and dlaa both of these techniques work on rtx hardware so that's about it for all these different types of anti aliasing techniques i hope this video was super useful for you if you are a game developer so if you found this video informative hit the like button and if you want to learn more concepts about game development be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on my next videos that's it for this video i'll see you in my next one until then take care